right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. The timing of this next interview couldn't have been more perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that last one, it just bothered me so much. I mean, I know. a cartel hitman, I, I don't care. If you, if you kill people, just, I don't want you, I don't want to read your book. I just, oh my gosh. Does that bother you? At, it does. At all? It, it just it, it really does bother me. I know that the the, the arresting no. officer was making some good points, but oh my mm -hmm. gosh! No, that just bothers me. So I that's why I love I this you. book. I don't have the book, but I wish I had the book. The cover makes me wish I had the book. Look at that picture on the cover. I know, book. isn't she fabulous? M G. The many sides of Marjorie Goodson. Absolutely Cur fabulous. For, for creativity, Marjorie Goodson is on the phone. She is a veteran ballet and jazz dancer. She's the founder of the Barack Ballet, which I was looking at a video just a little while ago uh, in L.A. She's a philanthropist whose work includes the Amanda Foundation, the Wallace Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts. Don't send her a letter asking for money because every time you say somebody's a philanthropist, all the people call, oh, uh, yeah. can I have her address? That's no, right. No, we don't do that. We don't do no. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we She's don't giving do away that. money because she wants to and she knows who to give it to. It's let her do her thing. Exactly. If her name sounds familiar, uh, sh her father was Mark Goodson. Uh, you might remember that name from game shows. And her publicist really used that nicely. Um, the publicist writes in the letter, Mark Goodson's daughter shows she's got game too. Exactly. And I found it on Amazon. It looks like it's getting good uh, good reviews. And people who bought this book also bought the book called Private Nudes, which I think that's kind of... <laughs> 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 Robin didn't want me to say they, that. They don't understand what this book she did, is about. Robin didn't want me to say that, but <laughs> no. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. People who bought this book also bought that book. It just says so right here. Uh, Marjorie Goodson, you are a breath of fresh air this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Larry. Thank you so much. I'm I'm sort of enjoying listening to you guys talk about me. Maybe I'll just be quiet for the <laughs> I mean, this is, this is really better than anything I think I could add to it. So, uh, thank you, Robin. Thank you so much. You are an uh, athlete. I was looking at pictures. You are so athletic. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's so funny because I really, I have to laugh that even though I'm 54 years old, I'm really in the best shape of my life, which is so ironic because given you know the fact that everybody thinks that being young you have to that's when it all happens and the fact that i i look at that and say that's really not the case at all really and, uh, not for me anyway so this is this is an inspirational book for many people i'm guessing i i would hope so you know it's uh sort of the cherry on the sunday that has been the uh you know sunday of this book because um i never expected it to turn out this way i just did it as something that i wanted to do that would help me uh, to feel strong and empowered and and uh, you know to think that this could inspire somebody is really a blessing so you've, you've been a ballet dancer all your life or am I mistaken no I started dancing when I was eight years old and I started at the School of American Ballet in New York City where I grew up and from there I ballet has been my foundation mm -hmm. and then when I was about 17 I was introduced to jazz which I absolutely love and became a Bob Fosse fanatic. Oh, I love and, him. Uh, I, I love him. I in love with Broadway and, you know, being raised in New York. I mean, you really had that right in your backyard, so to speak, all yeah, the, the yeah. wonderful shows. And so I really grew up in sort of a very creative environment. And uh, so that's been sort of the, the love of my life. For as long as I can remember. Uh, some people would say that we only have one lifetime to live, and in my opinion, that's not true. And this is very evident in your book because you give us an insight into many of your lifetimes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, I think for me, I guess the word reinvention might apply here, and that it's never too late to grab on to something that you want to do, but it does come with a bit of a caveat, which is that it's not easy. And then if you're looking for easy, then that's then this is not sort of the book to, to, to follow because um, it's been a, quite a struggle. It's been, it's been difficult. The biographical material that we had uh, says that when you had the empty nest moment, 49 years old, I think it said, you, yes. you suddenly made a decision. What, what was the... Like, what kept you from going the other direction? What, what, what made you get into that rocky moment where you start <laughs> doing whatever you needed to do to become <laughs> what you became? Well, for me, there really wasn't a choice. My, my daughter and I are very, very close. And as a matter of fact, uh, she's a beautiful horseback rider. And um, we've been down to Ocala a couple of times. I was going to ask. Uh, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's a beautiful equestrian. And when she went off to 
to college, I mean, the first thing was, what am I going to do? How am I going to, I'm going to miss her. And yeah, I've always yeah. been raised with the foundation of, you know, get in there, do something. My father was very, you know, tenacious. And so these these life lessons sort of popped into the forefront of my, my brain when it was, when the time was right. And I really had no choice but to to do something like this. It just felt like this is the only thing I can do. And um, so I, I went about it. I threw myself back into the dance world. And after about two and a half years, um, the notion for a book um, happened. And uh, here we are. You know, and at 51, I created uh, MG. In, in the world of the arts, it, it is interesting. An artist who paints, the painting is the art. An artist who sings, even though the singing comes from the body, it's still the singing that is the art. But in a in a dancer's case, you are the art, and 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 maybe that's why this works well as a photographic book. Right. Yes, you're using your body as art, exactly, to create shapes and um, and to create images and feeling and all of that. So, uh, you had to. But when you decided to embark in, in this endeavor, you had to really find the most wonderful photographer that, that you could to, to feel right with allowing them to photograph you. Could in, have called me. In these different... <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I, I, I can yeah. I can take a picture. <laughs> Ab absolutely, that that's absolutely true. And as a matter of fact, when I first began the book, and um, what a lot of people don't realize is that this is only going to be a one 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 and done. I call it just a personal book for myself. And it was only until I got really? sort of yes, I never planned to publish it. It was just going to be a personal journey for me. And, and then as we got into it and saw the quality of the work that was being done by the, the magnificent Andrea Ratatouille, if, which took me almost a whole year to pr figure out how to pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, really? Couldn't I get someone named Jane Smith? <laughs> you know, I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, that's funny. And so um, she was so magnificent. And I told her, I said, really, through your lens... I got to become the artist that I've always wanted to be. That's interesting. And, and it, is, it is interesting also. I think Robin was trying to say that the photographer becomes the artist as well. So it's like an artist taking a photograph of other people's art. Uh, it, it's kind of what that is. Yes, absolutely. And and really seeing the, the photographs as, as she saw them and created them, it gave me such confidence to continue with it because I had no idea what what I was in store for, and I knew that uh, we had talked about um, notions and concepts, and I told her, I said, look, I'm not 20 years old anymore. I said, I don't want to do this fluffy little book where I'm running around in a tutu. I said, I'm not a young girl. I said, I'm older, I'm seasoned, I'm a little edgy, you might even say a little bitter, a little, you know, hardened and, 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 and experienced, and I said, I really want to show that in the book. There has to be a certain amount of sophistication and energy that comes from being the woman that I am now. But when and you, she got it. But when you are when you're creating a ballet, when you're creating a production, you're you're in the director's seat, um, you must have that same eye for light and shadows and movement and, and all of those things that you wanted captured uh, mm -hmm. in, for, of your to own of your own work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never created a ballet. I just want to, I've never created a ballet. I have been, um, you know, involved in a ballet company where I sort of helped to, to um, launch it, to get it off its feet. I was involved with, um, I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah, well, well with the, the Barack Ballet, I thought that was... Well, the Barack Ballet, no, well, the, I was a, a founding member of the Barack Ballet, where okay. I, I helped uh, Melissa Barack, who is a, a, a very creative, beautiful, talented dancer and a friend of mine who, who lives out here, and when she was just starting out with her company, um, we got together and I worked with her to sort of get her off the ground and 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 uh, get her into the to the limelight by getting her into the broad theater and 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 that sort of thing um and so we worked together for about a year and a half and that was really when someone said to me 
Why, Drew, what about you? What would you, would you ever want to do something for you? And that's when the notion of the book uh-huh. came to mind. Do you know when, when uh, music videos first started, uh, and we're, we're all old enough to remember that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes, we are. I, re- yes, I, remember, we are. I remember the conversation was that this is going to change the, um, the respect that the art of dance has because all of a sudden we have, uh, we've always had music on radio, but now that we have music videos, we can, we can incorporate into that all these wonderful dance dancers and dance choreographers mm-hmm. to go along with the music. And, and I thought that was true, but I'm wondering if it has, if it has faded since those early days of, of music videos. Um, actually, I was going to say the opposite, because now it seems like, particularly with um, Instagram and um, and all these shows like Dancing with the Stars, okay. so you can dance, it really has had quite a resurgence. And now, of course, um, I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine who is a dancer that the Instagram world has given dancers that are brilliant a platform to yeah. become their own superstars. And so we as dancers, I mean, these these, these kids are killing it. Oh, yeah. Um, they yeah. have hundreds of thousands of dancers, whereas before, back in the day, um, they would only, probably the, the height of their career would be just to be a backup dancer. And so dancers have really gotten... Um, quite a highlight now and are getting uh, a real place on their own merit which yeah. is so wonderful as a dancer I just I'm like because they are just the unsung heroes well I'm glad to hear that of production do you I know mean, who, they work so hard that little girl in the Sia video you know Sia the lady who did the Chandler? oh sure oh my gosh that little girl I, she might not be a little girl anymore I don't know but uh, she really kind of blew us all away and I don't know from a dancer's perspective what you thought of her, but for the rest of us who don't know anything about dancing, it just looked unbelievable. Unbelievable, yes. And you would be surprised that this is more the norm than not. These kids are so athletic now. They're like, they're just super, super heroes almost. I mean, the things that they can do. I was telling my friend, I said, when I grew up and we were dancing, it was just enough to get your leg up to 90 degrees. Mm-hmm. Now these kids are... Um, very, very athletic, and they do backflips, and they roll around, and I said, my God, I'd snap my neck off. It looks like you are, too, though. Um, is, this a, yeah. is this you with the black chains? This is you? With the this shor- is all me. The short it's black hair, me. the little black yes. dress. Look at this picture, Robin. <laughs> I oh know. My. It's fabulous. Oh, my gosh. I and- have- I have a wig on. I have a wig on. <laughs> well, that's a... Uh, a wig. Is, it's not the wig that makes the picture. Let me, <laughs> let me, a, a, everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the uh, other things that you had to do. You had to exude all of these different personalities for the photo shoot. You also had to be aware of the uh, different kind of hairstylists, uh, the, the makeup you had on, even the, the costume. Yes. And, you know, I have to tell you, it takes a village to to create something this amazing and having the photographer being that way. And also, Torsten Witt, who did the hair and the, the, the makeup and also was part of the creative direction, his vision, and when, when I would tell him about what I wanted to do and I would get the outfits, and, and he, would, he would create the makeup and the hair. And it was just, I was so fortunate to have such visionaries to work with that it allowed me to sort of not worry about it and know that, that I could go out there and, and just create. And I became these characters um, because of the incredible makeup and sort of the, the transition into this other world, if you will. Do you know what I'm going to? So wonderful. I want you to. I want you to be able to see it through my eyes. I'm going to. I'm going to reveal something to you, so you can okay, see. Because ahead. how how often are you on stage <laughs> and you say to yourself, "I wonder what they're thinking out there," right? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm yeah. I'm in I'm in your audience right now. Okay. Okay. And I want to tell Go you I, what I'm thinking of. When I was a kid, I had one of those models you put together with that glue, Aster's glue, remember? And, and, and it was a model of Superman. And Superman was busting through this b- concrete block wall. And, and these m- m- steel beams were all being bent. And he was busting through this wall. And I painted him to look really <laughs> wonderful. Well, in this picture, in this picture of you in this concrete room with these chains, I want nothing more than to be that Superman coming to rescue you because I don't know why you're in this room or why you have these amazing chains on but somebody's got to save you and 
Well, Larry, I couldn't think of anybody better, so get those red tights out and get ready. There you go. Oh, you don't want to see me in the red tights. But I, <laughs> but I want I to... I don't think I want to see anybody in red tights. <laughs> but I, th- I don't know what this picture does, but it makes you say, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful, but why is she chained up in a, in a concrete block room? Well, you know, um, that's so funny. Um, well, you know, I love... I love edgy and I love gritty and I love the the sort of the 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 juxtaposition of the ballet with the, with the the point shoes on that I have versus the, the 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 chains, which were by the way they were fake chains. They were just made to look real. They oh. were sort of a, a styrofoam because I could never have held them up. Those were those were like uh, very heavy. They would have been too heavy for yeah, me. Yeah. So they created them, but um, we wanted to create this sort of edgy. Um, darker yeah. um, image and uh, we actually there were so many wonderful uh, pictures that, that we had taken that I had to choose I think that was the hardest part as that I could only pick a couple of them because there were so many that Andrea took that were so wonderful that um, but I love that yeah, sort but of you know, strength and empowerment I, th- I think the gritty look that you're going for you are doing it wonderfully mm-hmm. But Thank but I want to give you two examples of people who tried and didn't do it so wonderfully. Do you remember when uh, George Michael came out with the with the scruffy beard and everything else, and then Donny Osmond tried to do the same thing? He yeah. just didn't know how to do gritty. <laughs> no, Donny Osmond. <laughs> do, do you remember that? And <laughs> and the black leather and, and I, lo- I, on I love work. Olivia Newton John, but I remember in Greece when she suddenly had the the black leather. Come on, everybody wanted to see Rizzo. They didn't want to see her. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, I loved Olivia Newton John in that. I just love when she <laughs> brought that cigarette and she did that little little thing where she put that cigarette out. Yeah. I was, yes, honey. With her red so shoes. I, oh, she was fantastic. But <laughs> uh, but I know what you're saying. Not everybody can do that. And and you know that really does speak to when I was creating the book that I really wanted to go to be as creative and authentic as as possible and not have it be um like you said uh what do you say donny osmond or, or you didn't quite get there right 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 but you you're there trust me oh what's, I'm, uh, uh, but you you do so you, well with you. with with that contrast i mean like you said the the toe shoes you know with with the chains and everything but then that's really you that looks like you're flying through the air and and doing those amazing it, moves it, also it is well that that was done um those shoots that were um and i know you haven't received the book yet but those flying shots are actually from jumping on a trampoline because that was the only way that oh, I was really? able to <laughs> catch catch air and I had to train for that for about a week uh, with my friend and choreographer who also used to um, work in um, um, trampolines and, and do all that kind of stuff and so he trained me and um, the, 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 the interesting part about that is that I've been working with it in, in the book with a knee injury Oh my, oh my decided, gosh. The minute I decided to do the book, I got a knee injury. And it was my second meniscus tear. And I knew that I was on borrowed time because going on point at the age of 48 years old is, is risky. It's, uh, you're you're gonna, you're asking for it. Oh, you, you look good. And, uh, I I just I just uh, became a Twitter follower of yours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe we actually say these words, Larry? Twitter follower. I mean, it's, it's really we're grown people here. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not dead. I'm just grown. That's all. <laughs> I'm just I'm, you know I'm, I'm a tweeter. Is that how it goes? You I'm are a sure. tweeter. Yes, I'm looking at your I tweets. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you are such an inspiration because you look oh feminine, God. you look edgy, you look Thank in between. You. I mean, gosh, you look Thank muscular. You. Look at you with the paint all over your body. Look at this one. <laughs> you got paint all over your bra and everything. Look at this, Robin. <laughs> Independence Day. Look at you. Boy, that's gritty. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, I was bored. I was bored. I wanted to do something. <laughs> I did it for Easter also. I, I got a little crazy. Uh, there's going to be a uh, uh, show probably done about this book, about your life, and there's going to be someone that, that will be playing you uh, to do all these different things that you're doing because it's it's very, very, 
inspiring the the history that you have and some of the obstacles you had to overcome till today yeah yeah we, we, i'm sorry we haven't talked about any of that i'm just too, I, I love these photos you know the the, the choices <laughs> the choices of the Barry, i'm falling in love with you thank you uh, I, i'm a half hour ahead of you so <laughs> Look, look at these the lighting though i mean Robert, just to, he's funny i know he is uh, he's yeah. too entertained he's, he's yeah but don't don't put time. me in red tights that's even funnier <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh, this is a wonderful uh look if, i wanted to point out from a photography point of view look at the shadows mm -hmm. i mean somebody decided you you or the photographer decided to put those shadows in there that's awesome yeah she she was incredible i mean i i had absolute faith in her and i think it really gave me license to just go out and and take chances and and really live on the edge there it be, was, on, be honest was it easier working with a female photographer i don't have anything to compare it to oh really oh there you go i don't know see a, a professional male photographer would definitely have to hide everything and just be professional at least <laughs> <laughs> well i have to tell you that um you know, I don't know from male to female, but um, I can tell you that working with Andrea, there was no ego, there was no anything. And the funny thing is, is that she had to learn about dance, and I had to learn about photography because she kept saying, like, Marjorie, because I would go wild with the dancing and jump around, and she's like, you have to slow down. <laughs> she goes, I can't capture you. you. I was like a wild Tasmanian devil, and I'm flying over here and flying over there and she goes she's like marjorie i can't in her best romanian accent i can't keep up with you i can't keep up with you and now she goes you have to sort of you know do it and then like hit the line and then i can capture it so i had to relearn how to sort of dance but pose at the same time and then she had to learn when to capture me because she would capture me sort of what i call mid position and i said i look like i'm having a seizure <laughs> and I said, no, nobody's going to want to buy this, you no, know. And I, I think so they we will. have to learn about each other's uh, art. Yeah, but the pictures themselves too. After you were done with that, and you sat with her, they're very dramatic because they're not all full color. They're not, you know, they're black and white. They're sepia. There are hints of different hues, and that really makes your art more dramatic. Yes. And I and I totally agree because those were the those were the that was the imagery that we wanted to achieve that sort of darker, grittier film noir. Film noir, type. I like that film yeah. noir. And uh, your daughter is very lucky to have you as a mom because you're inspiring her. I mean, gosh, to be an equestrian, you have to be athletic and you have to be disciplined and you have to uh, be one with whatever it is you're doing. Well, it's so funny that you mention that because my daughter now has become a singer and a songwriter and she's just about to uh, launch her EP which is this new word that I've learned which I <laughs> never knew before <laughs> That's and, right. I, and, and drop her first single it's like yeah mom I'm going to drop my first single I'm like <laughs> okay honey whatever <laughs> so yeah she's she's a fantastic singer and songwriter and just well, look. Uh, we we so broadcast we broadcast from the mall in Ocala. The mall it sits on a piece of property that used to be a horse farm, so mm -hmm. we have a horse farm connection here. Yeah. Oh my god, and it's if fantastic! You, if you're ever here, you come in. We we'll, we'll play the music, and and uh, and listen to. We'll show you. We'll put your book when it gets you. We'll put it on the coffee table. Yes. We oh got, my god. Everybody, it's a, it looks like it's a nice coffee table book, so we'll put it out there. It's very. It's a good. It's heavy. It's a very heavy coffee. I didn't realize it would be so heavy. Well, it's probably like big. It says, it says here it's big. It's a wonderful it showcase big. for you as a, a person to, to showcase your love of life. Thank you so much. I found it on Amazon. Do you want to give us a different website? No, there, it, Amazon is, is probably the best. It's there's Amazon, enough. there's Books a Million, there's Barnes & Noble. All right. Uh, well, uh, uh, Marjorie, what an honor to have you on the show. Do your friends call you MG? Is that why the title of the book? I have MG. I have so many nicknames. I don't know who's calling me at, at which time. <laughs> Marjorie, I, I, lo do. I, I love the book. My trainer calls me Goodson. I don't even know what's happening. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you how much I loved the interview. I hope you know that. Uh, and the book looks thank marvelous. You. I can't wait to see it in person. Uh, Marjorie Goodson, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Robin. We'll be right back. Okay.